Do you struggle with an intense need for independence that makes it really hard for you to connect with people, even good and honest people, because you're afraid of being trapped? There definitely is a time and a place to be independent and to push for fairness. But if you are finding that you lose out on a lot of your fulfilling relationships due to that fear, I made this video to give you a better relationship option. So if the idea of a committed relationship with one person for the rest of your life scares you, this video is for you. It's also for you if your friendships are not as deep as you would like, and if you wish that you could be closer to the people in your life, but you don't know how. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I am here to show you healthier, more secure relationships for life. So people out there who shy away from deeper connections with other people, let me ask you a hard question. Do you ever wonder what you might be missing out on in your relationships? You've seen other people chase relationships like a drug, right? Something is driving that obsession, but what is it? Is there a way for you to get that fulfillment in relationships without becoming addicted and without exposing yourself to potential risk and harm? Today, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to talk to you about something called avoidant attachment style and how it might be keeping you from finding fulfillment in your relationships by making you over-prioritize your own safety from unfair expectations to an unhelpful degree. That super independence that sabotages your intimacy, even with good partners. Now, the goal in this video is not to get you to open up to everybody out there in the world, to everyone like a fool and to get you hurt. That's not the goal. And a lot of people with avoidant attachment style, they immediately go there when they start hearing this talk. The goal here is to show you how and when to invest carefully with the right people into the best relationships so that you can overcome your fears and build those relationships that will fix your avoidant behavior and lead to fulfillment and sustainable relationships with trustworthy people. This video is going to show you how to build relationships that will feel fair, sustainable, and mutually fulfilling so that you do not have to fight for your freedom ever again. That sounds good. Let's jump right in. Now, you might not be familiar with avoidant attachment style, even if you live with it. Most people have never heard this term. You might actually think that these behaviors are a normal way of relating to your world. It was probably modeled for you or pushed on you by continued disappointments from other people. Maybe your parents, for example, and then with peers, and then with partners, and with everybody in your life who has continuously let you down and failed to care about your needs or be fair or be sustainable, especially people who are not self-policing with their values. They are hypocrites. You've probably experienced this a number of times, which is why hearing that that's not a normal way to live, to guard against that, probably is confusing at first. Here's what you need to know about avoidant attachment style. The research that has been published over the last 25 years in a number of different behavioral journals shows that avoidant attachment style is most likely and is an evolutionary adaptation to environments where nobody is going to meet your needs. In essence, a survival mechanism that kicks on when you learn nobody is trustworthy and no one is going to give you love and nurturing or care for your emotional needs. So you go dark and you fix everything yourself. This clicks on that permanent survival mode. It blocks oxytocin production through high cortisol. It blocks GABA production in a number of ways, or at least diminishes it. It blocks, in many ways, vasopressin bonding. It blocks, in many ways, serotonin production. What it will do is cause you to fixate on dopamine. Now, this forms going back into childhood. Were your parents unfair to you? Were they authoritarian? Did they yell at you? Did they talk down to you? Did they dismiss you? Did they scream at each other and you got caught in the crossfire a lot? Did people disappoint you? Did people teach you that they were not going to be reliable for you so you had to rely only on yourself? If there was a lack of fairness, a lack of stability, or even just a lack of warmth and affection so that you grew up in a cold environment, you likely have avoidant attachment style. If you're watching this video and it seems like it would be easier to have somebody guide you through this, a mentor to show you exactly what to do step by step in applying everything you're learning here, you need to join the Attachment Circle Mentorship Program. I will work with you personally for an entire year in 100 plus group calls. Plus, you're going to get the support of a growth minded community of other individuals who will be companions on your journey, people you can trust, people you can work with, and people you can practice these skills with. If you want to join us, join the Attachment Circle mentorship program. There's a link below in the description. I'll see you in there. Let's run back through those brain chemicals one more time, but a little bit slower. 
Oxytocin is released when you feel loved and cared for and connected to other people. Warmth and intimacy gets you this. But that requires closeness and vulnerability with other people. It also release, It also requires low cortisol. Cortisol blocks that reception of that oxytocin. When you don't have much oxytocin, it's harder to produce GABA. Gamma amino bacteric acid, G-A-B-A. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that shuts down more cortisol. It's an antidepressant, anti-anxiety that releases in your brain. Also helps you sleep at night by helping produce melatonin. But GABA helps you feel calm and relaxed. Now, if you have avoidant attachment style, you don't solve problems with other people. You pull away during times of stress or conflict to solve problems alone. That means you are not going to be releasing and re removing cortisol with other people, which would be required for vasopressin bonding. Vasopressin bonding is shown through the work of Dr. Sue Carter and her research papers, one of the best researchers in the world about oxytocin and vasopressin, shows that that makes you feel safe because you have people who will solve problems with you. When you don't don't solve problems with them, you don't get that, so you don't get the safety feeling either. And if you don't have those intimate relationships where you share, you talk, you bond, you solve, you, you connect, if you don't have that, you will have very low serotonin. Most people with avoidant attachment style hyper fixate on fitness and nutrition and certain activities to try to raise serotonin, but you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. That's why most people with avoidant attachment style fixate on dopamine, especially novelty dopamine in their relationships, which is why people with avoidant attachment style really struggle after the first six months of any romantic relationship. Many of their relationships will die at 12 months because they try to make it last for as long as they can. Now, all of this is designed to help you survive. Survival is everything. It's not about being a coward. It's not about being ignorant. It's about surviving in a world where nobody cared about you. Now you're in the adult world and that survival mode has still clicked on. So you are going to primarily connect with other people by giving them dopamine and trying to make them feel good. So they in return will try to make you feel good. You try to stay back from most people so you won't open up and you won't signal interest to healthy, loving, stable, secure people. Mostly what you're gonna pull in are people who want to get binging on dopamine and feel cared for and feel that saturation effect. That's mostly what's gonna happen or you just stay completely back away from other people and you send a locked door signal to healthy people. What's going to happen is you are going to continuously pull in takers while pushing away anybody who would seek to build a fulfilling relationship with you because that's going to confuse you and you will confuse them. They will walk away. This creates a bias loop where you will think you have only ever met takers or people who weren't interested. Common signs to look for. Chasing a lot of dopamine. Never feeling really fulfilled not knowing what happiness feels like, not understanding why other people fixate on relationships so hard, feeling safer with money and resources than you do with other people, feeling like you have to constantly perform so that other people won't turn on you, feeling like your safety mechanism is making people happy, feeling like you are only really safe when you're alone, Feeling like you have to take constant time all by yourself away from other people to try to recharge. That's not really being an introvert. That's usually having attachment issues and being performative for safety. But really, one of the biggest signs is avoiding risks in relationships. Even if you enjoy thrill-seeking in other ways and risky sex and risky all kinds of stuff, the commitment... Avoiding commitment risk, legal risk, liability, avoiding that like the plague... Because here's the number one piece, an avoidantly attached person doesn't believe anyone will ever be fair to them, especially when stress is on. They believe everyone else will turn into a hypocrite and take from you the moment they feel stressed. So avoidantly attached people avoid any situation where they could become trapped and have leverage used against them. Now, this is why it is so hard for an avoidantly attached person to feel connected or fulfilled in their relationships. It's, it's not about weakness, okay? When I say fear, I, I don't mean cowardice. I mean a desire for freedom because they don't believe other people will ever build a fair, sustainable, mutually fulfilling relationship with them when it really counts. They believe they will be thrown under the bus every time, have things ripped out of their hands, be dictated to. That's what this is about. Again, it's not cowardice. It's not fear. It's not ignorance. It's not trying to hurt anybody. It is trying to be safe from people who will hurt you.
Now, I have seen this affect sex drives as well, because after six months of novelty dopamine, the same partner is no longer exciting. This is why a lot of avoidantly attached men say, I can't imagine having sex with the same woman for the rest of my life. Sounds awful. Well, yeah, after the first six months, then you have to try to spice things up with everything else in the world to try to get novelty dopamine again. You've missed the oxytocin bonding pathway that makes a man attracted to a specific woman. It makes her attractive to you instead of her body parts being attractive to you instead of the novelty being attractive. Oxytocin will actually drive your erection over time and make it stronger and more powerful. That's what a lot of men are missing when they have erectile dysfunction later on. Oftentimes it's paired with avoidant attachment style and incredibly low oxytocin. I've also seen all of this avoidant attachment make huge problems for women. Women with avoidant attachment style will often focus in on physical connection instead of emotional connection, meaning they want stimulation. They have a hard time orgasming typically, but they want to face away with no kissing or maybe some kissing at the start to get the arousal up and then stop face the other way. Don't do it for them. Sex often is more about maintaining their partner's happiness and occasionally getting that dopamine hit and some validation, some approval, feeling pretty, right? But it's not really about the emotional intimacy. A lot of these women will throw their clothes back on as fast as possible and get out of bed the moment it's done. And it becomes very mechanical and very transactionary later on in marriages, even in five, six, eight year marriages, I help couples and I treat couples where they come in and the husband's like, I don't know why I want more emotional intimacy during sex. She wants none. And we're about ready to get a divorce over it. And she has no idea what he's talking about. So I'm going to call something out right now. Most avoidantly attached people are extremely skeptical at this point. It is okay if you're watching this and you have avoidant attachment style or you think you might, it's okay if you're skeptical, okay? This is a brand new way of relating to other people. It probably flies in the face of most of your personal experience. Skepticism is normal. So the idea of popping open and sharing with other people that you're missing a range of experiences, it, it might sound weird. It might sound like, nah, this guy's selling me something, right? In fact, what I'm talking about is established science. Let me say, share the changes that I have seen that avoidant people go through when they shift their approach in relationships from that concern, that fear of being trapped, that fear of intimacy. When they start building greater security for themselves with the right trustworthy people, and when they start building those fulfilling relationships. Let me show you what that looks like so that you can see the difference. In particular, one story stands out. I had a male executive client. I won't say his name, um, but he's allowed me to share this story. I had a male executive coaching client who came in. He had a chronic dating history. Six months out, six months out, six months out, six months out. He had done this for about 30 years. He was in his mid forties now. Loneliness was starting to set in. He was wonder, really wondering, is this all there is? I haven't got married. I haven't had kids. I've made a lot of money. I'm great at my job. The C-suite people around me love me. My, my board members love me. They all think I'm amazing, but I have no real deep relationship with them. They just think I'm great because I'm good at my job. I don't really have friends. I don't really have close connections with my family. My siblings kind of keep me at arm's length or they, th they complain I keep them at arm's length. I don't really know what more looks like. He spent his nights drinking that struggle away. It was a lot of alcohol, a lot of video games, a lot of porn, a lot of just sitting there dopamine binging on that dopamine brain, right? And he said, there's got to be something else here, Adam. I don't know what it is. He watched my material for about six months before he said, all right, I'm willing to give it a shot. We jump into coaching together, okay? I started walking him through those neurochemical brain pieces, right? This is what your brain looks like. Very skeptical. I said, started saying, okay, have you ever opened up to somebody? Did it ever feel good? He did mention that he had one person at one point that he had opened up to. It was a counselor at some program. I can't remember exactly, but it was a counselor of some kind he'd opened up to. And he said it did kind of feel good, but they lost touch and it ended up falling apart. But for that moment, it was kind of good to open up and, and be accepted by another human being. I walked him through, okay, that was low cortisol and probably a little bit of oxytocin, probably a little bit of vasopressin and probably a little bit of serotonin. Imagine if that was all the time. Imagine this one exception you experienced. If that was all the time with a couple key people in your life that you had established trust with because they had proven themselves worthy of it, okay? That made a difference to him. So he selected a couple people in his life he wished he was closer to, uh, his sister and two friends. 
And I showed him how to have the conversations that opened up just a little bit. And he started experiencing those brain chemicals. Then his next date, he actually started opening up a bit more. And it was like that. And all of a sudden, he was experiencing that oxytocin pathway where he was really connecting. And he really built a loving relationship for the first time in his life. He had friends. He had a good sister. And he had a loving dating partner. His life that much better because he was able to fix that. I also had a female client, a married female client with, again, huge of intimacy issues. The female client before that I was talking about that she had, well, she was about ready to get divorced with her husband because he was pushing for emotional intimacy and she couldn't stand to be face to face during intimacy, physical intimacy at all. We had to talk about that. We had to talk about her process, her fear of that intimacy. We had to talk about how it actually provoked fear in her. He thought it was rejection and disgust. She said, no, I, I'm really afraid. And then she had to start saying, you know, I'm actually afraid right now. And he could say, okay. And at least he wasn't feeling rejected. Then we worked her into, I feel afraid right now. So I would like to take another five, 10 minutes talking and being physically close. So I feel a little bit safer. Then it was, you know what? I could use a little bit more foreplay, connecting and talking. Talking became her thing. It wasn't she needed physical foreplay. She needed that emotional conversation and she started to love it. Interestingly, women are designed to love that emotional connection first, then move into foreplay, then move into that physical arousal and intimacy. That's designed in. Most avoidant women have no idea. When I trained her and her partner into doing that, their sex life took off. She started loving it. She couldn't get enough. He was asking her for nights off, but it's because she was finally experiencing that richness of emotional connection and multiple orgasms. That helps. But she was experiencing that bond, that emotional intimacy. It took some time, but she went from mechanical to fulfilled. And so did her husband, by the way. If you're watching this video and it seems like it would be easier to have somebody guide you through this, a mentor to show you exactly what to do step by step in applying everything you're learning here, you need to join the Attachment Circle Mentorship Program. I will work with you personally for an entire year in 100 plus group calls. Plus, you're going to get the support of a growth minded community of other individuals who will be companions on your journey, people you can trust, people you can work with, and people you can practice these skills with. If you want to join us, join the Attachment Circle mentorship program. There's a link below in the description. I'll see you in there. All of this, it's about switching from survival mode into winning mode. It allows greater success with your trusted group, with those core people who have proven themselves, proven themselves worthy of your trust. Okay. Neurological basis happens for both states. It's your brain chemistry like this to survive in a bad environment, your brain chemistry like this to survive and thrive in a loving, supportive, trusting environment. So at this point, I hope, <laughs> I hope we have made the case that avoidant attachment style can lead into secure attachment style. You want to fix it, right? Let's talk about how we can resolve these attachment issues and move into a more fulfilling relationship style. Here is the pathway, the proven pathway that helps my avoidantly attached clients go from surviving to winning in their relationship. First, you have to establish a framework of trust. The one that I teach clients is my four levels of trust method, okay? Do they have self-policing principles that they keep coming back to that you can predict, those morals, those ethics? Do they have self-policing life goals that they keep coming back to that you don't have to push them through so that you can predict what they're going to do? You can respect and predict them because of their values and their goals, okay? Level three, do they take ownership of their issues and share that baggage with you openly, not so that you can enable them, but so that you're aware of it. And then do you share yours with them and do they accept yours in return? Mutual acceptance is level three. They've got to take ownership on all three pieces. That makes them trustworthy. Self-policing. You don't keep them policed. You don't manage their feelings anymore. You don't fluff them. They are self-policing. That's the, the three things that make them safe. Then number four, are they mutually fulfilling? Do they chase fairness? Are they looking for a sustainable relationship, which by definition must be fair because otherwise it won't be sustained for 50 years. Mutual fulfillment is level four. Are they doing all four? Are they doing all four of those? That's the four levels of trust. This allows you to filter people and to determine who to trust. So when I have clients come in, they say, okay, Adam, I have this person. I'm not sure if I should trust them or not. Okay. 
Let's walk through each of those four levels and apply it. If you're not sure, you need to go have an interaction with them. Have this conversation, say this, ask this, do this. It sounds tactical, but it's a smart approach. You're selective, you're smart, not manipulative, selective and smart. So you walk them through the levels. You stop them when they show that they are not trustworthy. So maybe it's a level two and they never come to level four. Okay, maybe they stop at level zero, but maybe a few people come all the way through to level four. Those are the only people that you should really give your trust to. And anytime there's a conflict, you run through all four levels again to refresh and see if both of you are still trustworthy. If you are, it bonds you deeper together. If you're not, who? okay, we need to have a talk about that. If someone's downgrading through the levels, serious problem. You have to have a discussion. I, I show people how to do that too, if that's scary. So next comes that selective opening up to people, right? You test that bond, you test yourself. This improves that brain chemistry as you open up oxytocin, GABA, vasopressin, serotonin, all of that starts to filter in and you start to feel good. It's kind of confusing. Some, some avoidant people actually get scared the first time because it feels good. And they're like, I don't know if I like this or not, but, but then they ease into it. And it really Nature takes its course. Your brain starts getting signals that I am not just surviving alone in lone wolf survival mode anymore. I'm actually connecting with a thriving group and they're going to help me and we're going to bond together. Your brain starts to respond to what you experience. That's why it's so important you have the experiences. Okay. I'm not going to say that you be vulnerable, right? It is the right word, but your security will actually increase. So you're not going to be vulnerable to these people, like naked. You're going to be emotionally vulnerable, but your safety will increase because the people you're talking to will be at certain levels that you can stop, you can push back, you can apply boundaries. You need to learn that boundary method as well, but your safety and security around fairness will increase. You're going to be stronger against manipulators, not weaker. You're going to be much stronger against the takers in your life. Now, next comes learning the communication and the conflict resolution skills. These allow you to solve issues with ease, or they can help you push back against unfair demands. Now, you probably never learned these skills because you only learned how to avoid conflict and avoid communication. Sometimes you might've learned these skills in more of a professional setting, but you haven't generalized them over into the personal world yet. That happens a lot with my really successful coaching clients, but a lot of people have never seen these skills applied, so they don't know how to do it. Once you do these pieces, everything begins to change. And then once you use these skills, you have these new set of skills with trustworthy people. Again, that brain chemistry improves. You start to experience the fulfilling and secure relationships. Over time, those survival behaviors that you've had will recede in favor of behaviors that help you win in your relationships instead, meaning that the avoidance patterns no longer serve a purpose. It's not about dragging you out of your shell against your will. It's about teaching you the things you need and then you having those selective experiences. And if you like it, you keep going. You will like it. Your brain chemistry is designed for it, but you go at your own pace and you open up with the right people who don't try to drag you out by force. Now, over time, you become secure secure attachment style, but you become secure because of the trustworthy connections that you build in your life. You can relax into those proven trustworthy relationships that are fair because you have measurable reasons to trust these people. They are fair. They are sustainable. They are self-policing and they seek mutual fulfillment. Now, yes, there are a lot of skills you guys to learn as part of this that will help you develop this thriving mentality instead of just surviving and avoiding the danger, okay? So if you do feel challenged while you're trying to grow in this way, not a problem. Reach out. I have 15 years of training and experience. I am here to assist you. I am here to offer guidance when you need it. Now, I know a lot of my avoidant clients, <laughs> they don't like to reach out in the comments and say, hi, Adam, I'm avoidant, because I mean, that flies in the face of everything. So easier way, if you're looking for privacy, email me, support at adamlanesmith.com. I will answer personally. I will keep it confidential. I'm happy to answer questions. Come in, talk to me. I'm here. One thing I want you to take home from this video, avoid an attachment style is a survival adaptation designed to keep you safe, but it's not meant to be permanent and it doesn't have to be permanent. You do not have to be vulnerable to unfair people just to try to find this fulfillment either. Learn those skills, that filtering, the trust, the communication, conflict resolution. Learn those skills that I mentioned. You can be stronger against manipulators than you have ever been 
but you'll also be attracting the best people for close connection. Because once you do this, you start signaling interest and goodness to the good people out there who will then want more connection with you. That's when you're really going to start seeing the good people that you probably haven't quite seen yet. They're invisible to you and you're confusing to them. This will shift that so that you see each other and then you start bonding. All of this, everything in this video here comes together to help you find a loving relationship with a good partner that you're going to be glad to be in for the rest of your life. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said, if you're afraid of the idea of committing to one person, this can help. This can definitely help if it's the right person. Great friendships that serve you with great opportunities and positive moments are also going to come along because you're going to build those things, okay? Secure attachment is the answer to the question of what have you been missing? It is all the extra colors in the world that you haven't seen besides that black and white, okay? All the experiences you haven't known yet, but you knew something was missing. This is the answer. So thank you guys for sharing your time with me. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. I get that you're probably still skeptical. That's okay. Watch this video again now that you've seen the whole picture and give it some thought. Also, I have another video. If you want to see what secure attachment style looks like, go watch 97% of people get this wrong about secure attachment. It has a secure relationship model in it that will show you what that healthy bond can look like after you fix the avoidance. I will see you in that video.